As any celebrity knows, just because you're on top one day doesn't mean you'll stay there. From sitcom stars to athletes and even the king of pop, these 80s stars know what it's like to lose everything. Viewers once crowded around their television sets to catch a glimpse of heartthrob Willie Ames as Buddy Lembeck on the 1980s show Charles in Charge. He also starred in the 1970s sitcom Eight is Enough. In an interview with The Rap, Ames said that at his peak, he was cashing in $1.6 million a year, but his standard of living would alter drastically years later when he became homeless. Ames blamed his change of fortune on various factors, a lavish lifestyle, drug use, and bad investments. He told CBS that the pressures of fame led to bad decisions, such as extreme partying and drug addiction. No doubt, he had that in common with other young stars. I made some really stupid decisions in my life. But his own financial manager put him in a precarious position. Ames was convinced to invest in a coal mine, but ended up owing the IRS $400,000. The experience made him realize how little he knew about financial management and ultimately led him to pursue a new career as a financial advisor. Beginning in 1987, Jody Sweeten played the middle child, Stephanie Tanner, on Full House. Stephanie Tanner was known for her wit and sarcasm, along with her trademark outburst. How rude! However, it was Stephanie Tanner, not Jody Sweeten, who became a household name. As a result, Sweeten had trouble reinventing herself in the years after the show ended. In an interview with Complex, Sweeten said that after struggling to find new work, she resorted to drug use. Full House ended when Sweeten was 13 years old, and a year later, she was an alcoholic. When she was 20, she was dealing with an addiction to crystal meth. By 2008, Sweeten announced that she was going clean and decided to get help at a rehabilitation center. You know what I mean? I am who I am, and I, I, I've survived, you know. But the damage had been done. Sweeten was short on cash, and in December 2008, UPI reported that her house had been foreclosed upon. Then, in 2016, Sweeten's fortunes changed when Netflix picked up a reboot of Full House. Sweeten had a starring role in the new show called Fuller House, which depicted Stephanie's adult years with her sister DJ. Sweeten told Complex that she was excited for the comeback as it would give her a second chance at acting. Mike Tyson has long been a household name, but there was a time when he was making $30 million for a single fight. In 1986, he became the youngest heavyweight champion of the world and developed a reputation for knocking out opponents in one round. But Tyson's career was also littered with numerous mistakes that resulted in huge financial losses. 1988 came back to haunt Tyson when he was forced to pay $45,000 in court for a street fighting incident. After biting Evander Holyfield's ear in 1997, he was fined $3 million. By 2002, Tyson had lost millions in lawsuits against past promoters. He was also losing fights, which devalued his brand as a fearsome heavyweight boxer. Tyson filed for bankruptcy in 2003, citing more than $27 million in debt, according to the New York Times. There were other reasons for that hulking debt, namely his lavish spending, which included multiple houses and cars, even a Siberian tiger. But things began turning around in 2009 after Tyson's well-received cameo in the blockbuster comedy The Hangover. Soon after the film's release, Tyson began making appearances on TV shows and even went on to star in his own successful Broadway show, Mike Tyson, The Undisputed Truth, with other successful ventures in tow, including a podcast and cannabis farm. Tyson's finances are once again in order. Kim Basinger was one of the biggest movie stars of the 1980s. Her career began rolling when she appeared alongside Sean Connery in the 1983 James Bond film, Never Say Never Again. Basinger went on to become a respected actor in the years that followed, with acclaimed roles in films like The Natural, Fool for Love, and Tim Burton's Batman. However, Basinger's lucky streak came to an end in 1993 when she made the regretful decision of verbally agreeing to star in the film Boxing Helena. The actor didn't honor her word and mainline pictures sued her for nearly $9 million as a result. Basinger filed for bankruptcy afterward, arguing that her $5.4 million net worth at the time wasn't enough to pay the restitution. By the late 90s, however, the actor's financial situation started turning around after she received an Academy Award for her role in 1997's LA Confidential. In the 2000s and 2010s, Basinger continued adding notable roles to her acting resume with parts in 8 Mile, The Nice Guys, and two of the Fifty Shades of Grey sequels. Michael Jackson needs no introduction. 
After coming onto the scene as a child star with the Jackson 5, Jackson launched what would become a legendary solo career. His Grammy award-winning album, Off the Wall, was released in 1979. Jackson followed it up with the 1982's Thriller, which earned 12 Grammy nominations and went on to become one of the best-selling albums of all time. Jackson's 1987 album, Bad, had five number one hits, setting a record. At the peak of his career, Michael Jackson had sold more than 500 million albums worldwide. And yet, at the time of his death, Jackson was in debt as much as $500 million, as reported by The Guardian. His financial troubles began with a $22 million lawsuit settlement paid to the parents of a 13-year-old Jordan Chandler. Other lawsuits followed, some by concert organizers and some by investors. Jackson's financial situation grew to be so bad that he nearly had to foreclose on his treasured estate, Neverland Ranch. Another reason for his financial decline was Jackson's extreme spending. After his untimely death in 2009, however, the King of Pop began to experience a major resurgence in sales. According to the New Zealand Herald, Jackson has raked in nearly $2 billion since, averaging an impressive $360 million a year. For years, Gary Coleman tried to escape his famous Different Strokes catchphrase. What you talking about, Willis? Coleman came into the role in 1978 at 10 years old, and the show lasted until 1986. Different Strokes made Coleman a wealthy kid, allowing him to cash in $70,000 an episode. Yet, Coleman could never outgrow the role and had trouble finding new work to sustain his career. Coleman also lost millions after Different Strokes ended. He blamed his parents as they were his financial managers and therefore controlled his trust fund. Instead of the $18 million Coleman was meant to receive at the age of 18, his fortune had dwindled to $220,000. He sued his parents but only recuperated $3.8 million. In 1999, Coleman filed for bankruptcy, citing problems that included medical expenses. After a serious fall in 2010, Gary Coleman died at the age of 42. Sherman Hemsley played George Jefferson on two TV shows in the 1970s and the 1980s. While initially appearing on All in the Family, Hemsley stole the spotlight and was largely responsible for the creation of its spin-off series, The Jeffersons. With his clever and entertaining portrayal of an African-American businessman living in Manhattan with his family, Hemsley's show stayed on the air for a whopping 11 seasons. But even with all his success, Hemsley filed for bankruptcy in 1999. He ended up having to sell the rights to his sitcom residuals to two men, William Little and David Pullman, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Little and Pullman engaged in a legal fight over breach of contract allegations concerning the residuals, a conflict that continued well after Hemsley's death. That's not the only strange news surrounding Hemsley's posthumous finances. According to The Hollywood Reporter, his body had to be refrigerated more than a month after his death when a man claiming to be his brother objected to the contents of his will. It took four months for Hemsley to be finally laid to rest while the dispute reached a resolution. Corey Haim is the poster child of Hollywood tragedy. After making the teen star a household name in the 1980s, the industry did little more than chew him up and spit him out. Haim's breakthrough role was in The Lost Boys, which began a seven-time collaboration with 80s actor Corey Feldman. In the 90s, however, Haim's career went on the decline due to drug addiction issues. Most of his roles during that time were in direct-to-video films. In 1997, Haim filed for bankruptcy when he was just 26 years old. Sadly, Haim passed away in 2010 when he was only 38. The cause of death was pneumonia and natural causes. Feldman's posthumous tributes to Haim have shed light on the amount of adversity the actors experienced throughout their careers. For one, Feldman has spoken at length about the sexual abuse that he and Haim were subjected to as child actors, including in the documentary, My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys. Additionally, Feldman said that in the last years of Haim's life, he had been living in a low-income apartment and didn't have a car. According to Feldman, Haim also had no connections in the entertainment industry so no one was able to help him financially either. David Atkins, more commonly known by his stage name Sinbad, skyrocketed to fame as a result of his recurring role on A Different World. Sinbad portrayed Walter Oakes, a goofy dormitory director who tries to keep the college students in order. Atkins left the show in 1991 for a promising career in stand-up comedy. He went on to star in his first HBO special with 1991's Brain Damaged, Sinbad also became a fixture in middling comedy features like 1996's Jingle All The Way. He was so popular at the time 
that Fox gave him his own show in 1993, The Sinbad Show. However, it only lasted one season. By 2013, Sinbad had filed for bankruptcy twice, but a lavish lifestyle wasn't to blame. He told HuffPost that he was using his personal finances to fund his business ventures, violating the famous Hollywood Golden Rule. My thing is, I didn't buy Bentley, I didn't live large. I believed in me, I invested in me, and I invested in a lot of other people. He personally threw money toward his production company until he was $11 million in debt. Sinbad overestimated his chances to score another film role, and the debt kept piling up. However, Sinbad's career has since rebounded. He released a new stand-up special in 2010 and has appeared in numerous TV shows since the early 2000s. Unfortunately, Sinbad was hit with a major setback after suffering a debilitating stroke in 2020, and his recovery is ongoing to this day. Screech from Saved by the Bell was everyone's favorite geek for more than a decade. Played by Dustin Diamond, the character was impressively smart, yet hilariously oblivious to basic social conventions. Screech was so beloved by audiences that he probably warranted his own spin-off show. However, Dustin Diamond never got one. In fact, after Saved by the Bell and its college-themed sequels ended, Diamond had trouble finding new work. In an interview with his former Saved by the Bell co-star, Mario Lopez, Diamond said all his later acting auditions failed because producers couldn't see past the Screech character. I had audition and every single time they'd say, hey, we loved it, but we saw too much Screech in it. Sadly, Diamond wasn't able to comfort himself with his hard-earned money either. When Diamond was still a minor, his parents misspent his Saved by the Bell fortune, as reported by the Milwaukee Sentinel Journal. In 2001, Diamond filed for bankruptcy. By 2006, the former child star was forced to sell t-shirts in order to avoid foreclosure on his home. Diamond then schemed up some unsavory ways to make money, including a fake sex tape in which he hired a body double to play him. Additionally, a 2009 tell-all book put him in a bad place with his former Saved by the Bell co-stars. As a result, Diamond was never invited to the cast reunions. As he revealed to Lopez, he supported himself as a stand-up comedian in those years, an occupation he held as late as 2015. Diamond died in 2021 of lung cancer. He was 44. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. 4673